Okay, hello everyone. My name is Jenna Harrington and I am the social worker um, through White Settlement ISD and I serve the elementary schools as well as Tana Hill. Um, and along with me is Lauren and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi everyone, I am Lauren Vines and I am the mental health counselor and social worker for the middle school and high school students. So thank you all for, for joining us this today and, and watching our presentation. We, um, we feel that social media and internet safety is super important um, for our kids as they continue to grow and age. Um, you know, many children or youth have probably received cell phones over Christmas break. And uh, this will just be a good opportunity for parents to learn more about safety features and things that can happen if there are not any safety features. So one of the things that I wanted to first talk about is just the timeline of social media platforms. So as you can see, um, you know, at first we had LinkedIn and then we have YouTube and Facebook and it just starts to go from there. You have Pinterest and um, Instagram. I was not able to find anything that was more recent. Um, so going into 2020, um, but as you can see, it's just, it, it keeps expanding and it keeps growing. And so it's our job as parents and also just professionals that work with kids. Um, our job is to keep up with that technology so that we can ensure that we are keeping kids safe. Because as you know, um, a lot of these apps that are coming out have a lot of chat features where um, kids can meet strangers. And um, that's just a very scary thing to think about. Um, so on to the next slide. These are the most popular apps that I have seen. Um, I'm sure Lauren might has might ha might have a different experience with the older with the older population in high school, but TikTok is by far the the most um, popular right now. Um, in addition to Snapchat. Um, and then, of course, you have like the kick and the Twitch and Instagram and Facebook. But one of the things that I wanted to point out was also gaming devices. So when looking at PlayStation and Xbox, um, you know, a lot of these games like Fortnite and Call of Duty and whatever the kids are playing have those chat features um, where they can talk with people um, through the microphone or even just through typing. Um, so these are just the apps that kids are using now to stay connected to everybody and to meet people online. Um, one of the things that I did want to bring up is on Snapchat, a lot of the youth are sending messages or pictures just to random usernames to see what they get back. And uh, that's really scary if you think about it, um, because you're not really sure who you're sending that to. And and it's just something that I want parents to be aware of. And as you know, Snapchat, um, once it is viewed, it gets deleted, which we all know that in the media world and technology, things are never really deleted, um, but kids think that they are. Um, you know, another thing also with Snapchat and with the PlayStation and Xbox, there's a lot of that location sharing. Um, so kids aren't really mindful about turning off their location sharing on their phones or on their um, gaming devices. And so it leaves predators and strangers to be able to find out where they are exactly. Um, so that's just another thing that um, I wanted to point out. Um, of course, all of these apps have those age requirements. I think that, Lauren, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that a lot of these apps are 13 and up. Is that I believe what I believe yeah. so. Um, however, um, a lot of kids are using their parents' birth dates <laughs> um, so that they can get access to these um, profiles for Facebook and Snapchat and stuff like that. So that's just another thing to, to be mindful of. Um, one of the most important things that I wanted to talk about is the hidden apps that are on some of these devices. Um, there's all kinds of different hidden apps that kids can get. Um, and so, and there's different reasons why they do that. So it, they have the ability to hide apps that you do not want them to have. Um, they can like such as social media and dating apps. They can hide text and online chats, pictures or videos. 
um, and play games and chat with people that they do not know. So I'm just going to play this quick video um, so that you can kind of get an idea of that. We did find those dangers. You may think you know what's in your child's phone, but think again. The I-Team talked to a tech expert about the latest ways to keep your kids safe. There's no such thing as privacy for children. Retired Naperville detective Richard Wastocki says many parents make the mistake of giving children smartphone privacy. You should have the code, the swipe code to get into the phone, the numbers to get into that phone, and you have the right to go into that phone anytime you want. Wistocki now holds seminars around the country about the latest smartphone concerns, including apps which can hide pictures and videos acting as secret vaults. The most widely used vault looks like a calculator, works like a calculator, and kids will hide all these pictures. There are several different versions of those fake calculator apps, but many have to be purchased or downloaded through app stores that have a verification process, which parents can monitor. Wistocki also showed us Snapchat's feature, which can hide past memories like old stories and old pics. It's called My Eyes Only. Snapchat says it's designed so users can hand their phones to friends without being worried they might catch an eyeful of something meant just for them. So the parent grabs it, they see my eyes only on there, wham, they hit that, put the code in. If there's a code pad there, then they're hiding stuff in their stories, in their vault. Snapchat says users must be at least 13, and its safety center says parents should discuss safety with teens, and if they believe teens are in danger using the app, parents should deactivate their account. Snapchat also says built-in parental control settings are an option. And you may want to turn off two-step verification on your teen's phone if you're using apps to monitor their activity. If there is a signal that a third party is going in there to look at the stuff, it sends the owner an email. You must change your password. Wistocki says newer two-factor authentication can make it difficult for parents to use third-party monitoring software. However, Apple and privacy experts urge all customers to use two-factor authentication for all devices for data security. Now, another great safety tip. Some kids may say they need to charge their phone on their nightstand. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. They I don't. That. Take it away. <laughs> hey, if you... Okay, so um, just another thing that I wanted to to point out um, and just remind you all of, um, you remember having a diary whenever you were growing up and if your parents read it, you were mortified. And so something that my parents always told me was if you didn't want anyone to know about it, then don't write it down. Um, so, but kids are getting sneakier now. Um, and so they're not writing things down as much, but they're posting videos and making videos. So just keep that in mind, um, that you have to keep up with that technology or, or they become smarter than you whenever it comes to hiding things and being sneaky. We did find those Oops. dangers. You may think. Sorry about that. Okay. So some of the popular hidden apps are, um, located here on the left. Um, a lot of times these apps will go off of the market um, because they know that um, they're not being downloaded as much anymore because parents are finding out. Um, and so what they'll do is they'll, the creators will create the same app, but just in a different name so that it gives kids and um, other, just people in general the ability to download those, those apps again. Um, so how to search for these hidden apps, um, you know, I'm not sure what kind of system your students have, but on the iPhone systems, um, you can go to the camera app, all photos, albums, and then there's also a hidden folder. Um, on Android systems, it's a little bit similar, file manager, all files, open the settings, and show hidden files. Um, so this is where, I'm sorry, this won't be for whenever you find apps. This is how you can find like hidden files and pictures that your kids have hidden on their phones. So I'm going to let Lauren talk a little bit about the uh, dangers of, of the social media world and the internet world. So go ahead, Lauren. Thank you. Um, real quick, before I talk about human trafficking, I wanted to, um, you know, reach out and let you know that another one of the um, gaming apps that you guys should um, pay attention to is the new and popular one, Among Us, because you can chat 
with the other people um, playing the game. And, and sometimes that doesn't just relate to who is the imposter. It could relate to, to other things, to getting to know your child. So I just wanted to, to present that to you guys. Um, so I'm not gonna go into full detail on human trafficking. I feel like this could be a huge presentation all in and itself, but I wanted to give you a little bit of information. Um, the National Human Trafficking Hotline has recorded, recorded recruitment in all types of both sex and labor trafficking on mainstream social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, um, WhatsApp, dating sites like Plenty of Fish, Tinder, and Grindr. So online recruitment may begin with commenting on potential victims' photos and sending direct messages. So this may be a, a photo your student has, has posted on their, on their social media and a random person who is commenting who have they have befriended on their social media um, is now commenting on these pictures. Um, what they do is they carefully build this rapport and intimacy um, to entice the victims of a false sense of trust or security. Um, so typically, if it is a, a female victim, um, the male perpetrator um, will befriend this individual, comment, give them flattery, um, promise gifts, luxury items. Um, I've known victims who have received Louis Vuitton purses and those types of things. Um, and essentially what they do is they continue to build this rapport and make them make the victim believe that um, he is her boyfriend and, and she is in love with him. And this typically comes with those who, um, who are experiencing some sort of vulnerability or um, lack of worthlessness, maybe some insecurities with themselves. So any type of, of flattery or, or confidence booster that that victim is going to obtain, the, the higher the risk for trafficking occurs. Um, so they'll develop the relationship, they'll make false promises, and then um, typically they could um, offer them jobs such as modeling or, you know, sometimes we see those posters hanging on um, electric poles and it says make $1,000 a week. Um, sometimes that is labor trafficking or sex trafficking. Um, so just be mindful of that and who your student is engaging with on their social media. So traffickers use social media to stalk or target their victims. Um, sometimes they impersonate others, so they may make a fake Facebook page. Maybe it's a, a picture of someone they found on Google, um, and that is not the actual person behind the computer screen. Um, they gain their intelligence for their victims by examining their post comments, um, co posts that they've made on other friends. Um, sometimes, again, as Jenna had mentioned, if their location is, is on, then they can put, I am at... Applebee's um, and sometimes that trafficker could potentially find out what Applebee's they're at and try to make contact in person. So be mindful of that on where your kids are being tagged at. Um, they exploit those vulnerabilities as I had mentioned earlier. So um, they pretend to have common interests with that victim um, between the victim and the trafficker. So once that trust is gained, the trafficker encourages the victim to meet him or her um, in, a, in a specialized location or even um, I can come pick you up. And, you know, we hear the horror stories all over the news or with Fort Worth PD um, about a child who went missing at two o'clock in the morning was last seen at their house. Um, I'm not saying this is trafficking, but it is an indicator um, when they leave their house with nothing in the middle of the night. So just be mindful of that. And you can come on. Oh, typically, oh, I wanted to go back really quick. Um, I apologize for that. Um, when a student is involved in trafficking, oh no, I'm so sorry, Jenna. It's okay. Um, when a student gets involved in trafficking, typically they use uh, coercion, um, demands, those types of things to keep that student um, or that victim in the trafficking realm or in the life as we call it. So um, they can threaten your family, they can threaten your friends. Um, sometimes there's drug and alcohol abuse or um, involved. Um, and so just be mindful of that. Make sure your students are, are telling you who they're speaking to on social media. There have been many cases, one in particular um, who was trafficked, um, a 16-year-old female who was groomed, which is um, building that rapport for over two years via Snapchat before she finally met her trafficker in person. Um, and at that point, she believed that this trafficker was her boyfriend and that they were going to run off and get married and were in love. So um, just be mindful, have those open communication, um, you know, talks with your students. 
find out who they're talking to, where they're going, um, be mindful of the pictures that they're posting if you're able to gain access. Um, and it all starts with having that open co uh, conversation and explaining here are the dangers to, to these types of things. And, and this is what could happen. And, and my role as a parent is to make sure that you're safe. And so um, if you have any questions related to human trafficking or anything like that, please reach out to me or Jenna and we can help you um, connect with resources or answer your questions to the best of our ability. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so moving on, um, one of the things that I like to share with kids whenever I'm working with kids, especially the older population, is to know the facts on the laws in Texas, um, since that's where we live. And, and as a matter of fact, there are laws when it comes to sexting. And, um, you know, I, I know that it has been quite some time, um, but sexting actually would require um, youth to register as sex offenders if there were pictures being sent back and forth because in in all reality it, it's it's child pornography um because these kids are under the age of 18. so um so here is a link that you can click on um so that you can see the actual texas penal code yourself um it takes you straight to the website and so sexting is a crime in texas if no adult is involved um, so it is a crime for a minor to intentionally or knowingly send another minor an obscene pic or video or a pic of video um, of a minor engaging in sexual conduct if they know it was a minor. So, you know, you have girlfriends, boyfriends or boyfriends, boyfriends, girlfriends, girlfriends that are sending um, each other pictures back and forth and they might even share it with their friends and, and that's considered sexting and, and that can get them in a lot of trouble. Um, and other things uh, that I wanted to point out is, um, you know, cyberbullying. And so that's something that um, we as just professionals working with kids take very seriously. Um, I'm sure you can imagine what it would have been like if you or I had um, internet access and social media whenever we were growing up. Um, I can, I mean, I can't even imagine what it would have been like when it comes to cyberbullying. Um, so it's defined on the Texas Penal Code website, it's defined as a person using any electronic communication device to engage in bullying or intimidation. So this form of bullying falls under the broader bullying law above. Relevant communications include, for example, statements made through social media and text messages. The charges could be considered defamation or could be considered harassment. Um, and just something to also keep in mind um, is that laws are constantly changing and so it's important for our kids to know what the laws are and like what the consequences could be if they participated in this sort of activity. Um, so I also wanted to talk about social media and mental health. Um, there are many, many, many studies out there um, about mental health and the connection it makes with social media. Um, the increase of mental health issues with you who use social media and internet frequently. Um, there's multiple studies that show that there is an increase in mental health diagnosis because of social media. Um, depression and anxiety are among the worst. Um, and so acceptance online with peers shows activation in similar brain regions. Um, so whenever you receive money or, or taste something pleasant, um, it's the same activation that you may receive. The, the, the activation that you get from your brain is the same that you will receive if you get a nice comment about yourself or likes on your picture or likes on a comment or something of that nature. And so um, if you don't get what you're wanting out of that picture that you posted or that comment that you posted. Um, it could lead to just self-confidence issues and self-esteem issues. Um, and so, you know, you think about the teenager's brain and how it's still growing and still developing. Um, teenagers are already so vulnerable, vulnerable um, and a lot of them already have self-esteem and self-confidence issues. And so whenever you add in the social media aspect of it all, it just gets worse. So what can you do as a parent? I'm going to play this other short video and we will talk about it when we are done. 
more and more parents are trying to track what their kids are doing online, and there's an app for that. That's right. Kelsey McFarland joins us now live in the studio to break down what the apps can and can't do. Kelsey? Good morning, ladies. Yeah, about 10 years ago, parents were concerned about what website their children were on, but now kids have moved to apps like Snapchat and Instagram, and parental control programs are trying to keep up. We're in a digital age ruled by social media. They're wasting so much time staring at a phone. It's just constant. These Las Vegas moms all agree their mission of keeping their kids safe online starts with an open conversation. We have conversations every day about social media. It's, it's important daily. It has to be daily conversation. And my, my kids have access to my phone. So I think when we tell them the why and we give them the background information, I think it helps. But kids are going to be kids, and that's where parental control programs come in. Net Nanny, Teen Safe, and Bark all alert parents to possible dangers like internet predators, cyberbullying, or suicidal thoughts. But apps like Snapchat and Instagram have a code that's tough to crack. They've blocked parental control programs from viewing their content. Snapchat, for example, uh, they've, they've made it impossible for and then they look at the content that's going back and forth. It's obviously intentional, right? It makes, makes kids uh, happy that mom and dad can't look at it, I guess, is what would be. <laughs> but um, we, we have done a lot of work to still give parents info on that kids are using it and then what, you know, what to be concerning about it. What you can do is monitor how often your kid is using the app, control when it's available, or block it altogether. Beyond the parental control programs, these moms all say they have the password to their child's phone. But we've always been very strict and aware uh, and have created parameters for them um, to be able to make sure that they are safe because there's a lot of bad people out there. So I think a good takeaway from this is there is no app that does all the work for you. So it is really just up to parents to kind of do that extra work, have that conversation. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a helicopter right. parent, but yes, it, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, sometimes I text my friends like, "Hey, did you see Taylor, your daughter's picture?" And she's it like, helps. "No, what? Wow, thanks for telling me." Yeah. And then it comes down, and I'm like, "Oh, risque, you know? Yeah, but take yeah. the village." Yeah. So that is something that I wanted to reiterate is that it does take a village. Um, and so whenever you um, have your community of your friends, um, look out for each other's children. Um, if there's something that they pick up on um, for your friends, or if there's something that, that you're seeing um, online from your friend's children, let them know, because um, hopefully they'll do the same for you. Thank you. More and more parents are trying. Okay, so let's talk about those parental control apps. I mean, as, as that video had kind of stated, there is not just one app that can help you with everything. It is going to require you to go through phones. Um, but the best for social media monitoring is, is Bark, and then you have um, Net Nanny, um, and then also on iPhones, there is um, the ability to do screen time where you can block access to the phone. Um, you can set limits for apps, you can block things and, and, and have content privacy and restrictions. You can also turn down the phone, it's called downtime. Um, so say for example, if you don't want your child on the phone after nine o'clock at night, even if they do put it in the kitchen to charge or whatever, you know that they go into the kitchen and get it at night. But if you have this on your phone, then, um, they are not able to access like any apps or anything of that nature. Um, and then for Google, there's also Family Link. All righty. Oh, well, I accidentally clicked on a one of the links here. So hold on just one second. There we go. Lauren, can you tell me what page you're seeing right now? Sorry, I see the top four parental control apps. Okay, perfect. Okay, so tip for parents, um, especially, you know, kids that are just not getting cell phones or even kids that already have cell phones. Um, <sighs> have that ask to buy function on the app store so that they're not able to, to download any apps without permission. 
follow your kids on social media and take an interest in who they follow. Um, also be mindful that um, a lot of kids will have two different social media accounts. So they may have a Facebook that, that you're allowed to follow, but then they might have another account that is strictly just for their friends. And so, um, and they might even have like a nickname so that you can't really find it. Um, and so model good behavior on social media and cell phone etiquette. So if your teens or kids see you on your phone constantly, then what are they going to do? And um, so model that good behavior by making sure that cell phones are put away at dinner time and that you guys have opportunities to um, have time for unplugging, um, teach about the value of unplugging, set screen time limits for yourself, um, do not talk to strangers online, and do not share location for social media sites. Um, one of the things that I do as a parent and that I strongly encourage for other parents to do that have children that have cell phones is to have these social media contracts. You can find a dozen of them on Pinterest, you can make up your own, um, but this just kind of gives those clear um, expectations and boundaries for the cell phone use um, and social media use. Um, and if they break this rule, it, it, it's here. They've already signed the contract. So if they break the rule, then their phone is taken or the app gets deleted from their phone or whatever you decide to do as a consequence. But this is just a good opportunity for kids and for parents to develop these contracts together and have kids actually agree to this and know that um, having a cell phone is, is a privilege. It's not a right. Um, you pay for that cell phone as a parent. Um, you pay for the internet in your home as a parent. Um, so that's just something that um, kids need to understand. So have, having that cell phone contract, internet safety contract, social media contract, whatever you want to do um, is just good. To, it's a good visual to show for kids um, after they sign it, hang it up in their room so that they know these are the rules. And if you break these rules, these are your consequences. All right, so we are ending winter break. So this is the perfect time to set those new rules. Um, follow through with those parental controls and make those cell phone contracts. So that is the end of our presentation. Um, I hope you all have learned something. Please do not hesitate to reach out to Lauren or to I or your school counselor to discuss um, ways that you can make the internet and cell phone a little bit more safer for your kids. Lauren, do you have anything to add? No, ma'am. Thank you. Thank Aww. you, guys. All righty.